Yeah, he had bombs. All right, we'll go ahead and get the meeting started. Uh, the special workshop meeting. Uh, council, before <coughs> you have a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. So, Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Okay, we're going to continue with our FY15 budget discussions, and at this time, I'll turn the, over to Dr. Woodruff uh, to give us a prelude into tonight's topic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. Over the last several weeks, you have been meeting in regular weekly sessions, and you will recall that we started the budget presentation back on April 22nd. You have met on a number of evenings. You have reviewed all of the department budgets. As we have worked through this, you've also had a public hearing on May the 7th, and tonight, of course, we're continuing with our workshops. If you will look at your budget notes, which uh, I apologize for the fact they didn't come out until late yesterday, but since our last meeting was on Wednesday, it took us a little time to finish. There are two or three that I would like to specifically highlight that you asked for. The first budget note was note number 33, which had to do with sales tax. And the question was, calculate the rate of city tax increase, which would be necessary to totally offset any loss in sales tax due to the county tax rate increase for FY15. Now, as the public may not know, but as you know, the sales tax is distributed based upon a formula, and that formula looks at your tax rate as one of the components. Because the county has adopted their budget and they did have a tax rate increase, that could have a potential impact on, and it will have a potential impact on the distribution of sales tax a year away, not for FY15, but for FY16. So the question is, how much did they go up and what's the potential impact for us and what would you have to do to negate it? The answer came from the finance department who always does an excellent job of providing good research. And you will notice in the response the following. To absorb the county's action of adopting their new tax rate for FY15, the city would need to raise the city tax rate to 61.4 cents to remain revenue neutral. If you do not raise, the current tax rate is of course 53.8 cents. To keep from losing any of the sales tax, you would have to go up to the 61.4 cents. If you go any number short of that, you will lose revenue for next year. And this is not being critical to any government, it's just that there is a formula, and when one <coughs> government does something with their tax rate, it impacts <coughs> all other governments. So this impact will be to Richlands, to North Topsail, to every one Swansboro, to every municipality, and unfortunately, the way that the formula works is you almost have to play defense because if you don't raise your taxes then you will literally this coming year lose in, in FY16 you will lose eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars so to stay revenue neutral from the standpoint of sales tax a year away you would have to go to 61.4 cents question real quick 
Now that 61.4% that you're talking about, that's to not only to cover that $850,000 loss to bring us up to that, but also to bring us uh, revenue neutral on the property tax rate or bring in the same amount of uh, revenue that we anticipate each year? Yeah, yes, so let me answer. On, uh, based on what we would have been at 53, in order to achieve that, taking that sales tax thing out of it. Correct. And let me uh, let me explain. Uh, your revenue neutral rate is basically 57. Now, we don't have the actual number yet because almost every day, uh, Harry Smith, the collector, is uh, notifying us, the appraiser is notifying us of additional adjustments. Mm -hmm. So in the end, your revenue neutral rate may be 57.1, 57.3, and we have no idea mm -hmm. at this point other than the fact that literally every day, John told me today that he ran into a gentleman who has a shop just down the street here on 24, and that when he appealed his commercial assessment, it was reduced by $50,000. Every time that happens, it changes your revenue neutral rate. When we started the budget, we were projecting the revenue neutral rate would be 57 cents, meaning that you will get the same amount of revenue that you're currently producing at 53.8 cents. You would have to increase the tax rate to 57 cents to get the same number. Now, whether that's the final number or not, but Mayor, you're correct. If you go to revenue neutral, which is 57 cents and change, you will have offset some of the loss of sales tax. But to offset all of the loss of sales tax, you will have to go all the way up into the 61 area in order to offset that. Now, the other thing that uh, the Finance Department did is to project backwards because we know that there have been other adjustments. And I'm certainly not suggesting that you even consider these numbers, but just to show you the impact. The chart on response number 33 shows that if you were to recoup the loss in the distribution of over $2 million, you'd have to go up to 78.5 cents. And certainly no one is suggesting that. We are just showing you that that's the type of impact when formulas change, that's the type of impact you potentially deal with. So again, to keep from losing any sales tax a year away, you'd have to be up in the 61.4 range. The second thing that we wanted to clarify in note 34, you asked, please provide information about the county's tax rate increase and show what the adjustment was for revenue neutral versus any new revenue which the county was getting. That's note 34. And the response there was this. Prior to adopting the county's budget, their rate was 58.5 cents. Their revenue neutral rate is 62.61 cents. So basically they went up 4.11 cents to say revenue neutral. And if you think about it, you're at 53.8 your revenue neutral is somewhere around 57, two or three or whatever the final number is. So you are generally looking at the same type of increase just to say revenue neutral. In addition to that though, to, to address the financial needs of the county, they increased their eventual tax rate to 67 cents. So generally they went up, you know, a little over four cents, four and a half cents higher for new revenue. So they went in their budget from 58.5 to 67, a total increase of 8.5 cents. So does that address the questions there? Okay. And then while there are many notes in here, uh, those were the <coughs> ones that I wanted to highlight. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of the other notes, be happy to discuss them. Just out of curiosity, is there like a, a, a cutoff date or is there any indication as to what kind of, uh, when the appeals process? Can you come um, I talked to Harry last week and he said they wouldn't be done until the middle of June. So we won't have an exact number until. But, but there's an evolving number. Yes. And we're just, all so, the decisions up till now, uh, you know, are, are available. And so, you know, as you get closer to June, you're going to get closer to a number 
that's so what are you seeing as far as a trend is concerned? Are you seeing property values we're being readjusted down? Uh, there, there are two lines at the tax office. Those that want to appeal their tax value because it's too low and those that are appealing it because they think it's too high. Only Mr. Thomas was in the line because he thought it was too low. Uh, the other three or four hundred people are in there that is too high. Okay, so about so 301, right? What we're, what we're seeing is a trend, and every time that appeal is heard, if it is approved, like the gentleman John ran into today, you see that creep. Uh, right now, if we had to guess, we we're probably looking at a tax revenue neutral number of somewhere like 57.3, 57.4. But it may wind up 57.7. I mean, who knows? Because uh, every appeal, when it is approved and it takes the tax value down, it takes the revenue neutral number up. So don't be surprised if we bring back a number that says whatever, 57.6, 57.7. But that's a revenue neutral number. Now, how will that affect their numbers here? Would they readjust that? Or well, they have adopted their budget. So that's pretty much in stone for right now. So any recovery would come in a later fiscal year, correct? Right? Well, as, as the, uh, the best way to answer that, Mayor, is uh, they have adopted their budget. And what they're going to do if that revenue neutral number continues to creep up, um, I mean, that, that may have been one of the reasons why their eventual uh, adopted number was higher than the revenue neutral number. But they will have to absorb whatever that uh, revenue neutral float results in. Well, I mean, my concern would be how that would further affect our sales tax, our sales tax. Uh, well, you make a good point because, you know, if, if the, whatever their number is, not on the revenue neutral number, but whatever their final tax rate number is, that's the number that gets put in. The only way that the county can change that number would be to adopt a new budget. And I'm of the opinion that that is over with for them. Okay. Until the 30th of June, probably they can do some Thank modification, but after that, I think they're probably stuck with it. But Gail? I seem to recall a few years ago there was a slight change in the legislation that they could change it one time, and I don't remember what the reason was or if there was a date. I'll have to go and research that. Well, that would be budget note number 40. The mayor for Tim Mazzara has a. Richard, I have a question. So, what would you uh, say that the total sales tax distribution loss since 13 through FY15, that number is close to $3 million, isn't it? Yes. Three point. And, if, and if, the answer there is yes. Uh, it's in that $3 million range. And if you don't do anything to, uh, to, to uh, uh, I don't want to use the word protect yourself from next year, you're talking about losing almost another million dollars. And remember, the equivalent of $850,000 for all practical purposes is almost three cents of tax. It's a little less than three, probably 3 .7, uh, 2.7 cents, something like that. Of course, Gail doesn't let me do math in public. But, um, you know, every time that uh, we lose sales tax, we, we have that impact. But we will get you the law as to whether once the rate is set, uh, can it be changed. They impact us, too. Yes. Yes. Size them. Any other questions on notes? Okay. The, uh, the amount of adjustments are try, trying to run the figures through my mind in terms of people appealing their their rate. I mean, I, when you see somebody was losing 50000 got an adjustment of 50000 that doesn't mean much. What is it? $300 on a tax rate? Or maybe well, between the city 3000 <laughs> We're talking about the county, though. In terms of well, it's going to be $3,000. $3,000. Well, uh, wait a second. $50,000 $50, 50, change in your assessment. Okay. Remember, on $100,000, you're currently paying to the city $585. I'm sorry, $538. At 53.8, a $100,000 home pays $538. $538. So if you had a $50,000 reduction, you just basically save $260 $5 or something like that. 
the city. What part. I'm saying about the, the, the city county, part. Right? one penny brings in what a million dollars on the county rate for sales tax. No, that's the last Probably. number I remember, but I'm not sure There's if that's still. Three, I think the last for is all. one cent on the tax rate brings in, I think, a little over a million dollars. Three, okay, we'll get that actual number for you. That'd be budget note 43. We're but going. the problem is, is that as as we were told, most of the values either held or went down in the residential. And most of your appeals are coming from commercial because a lot of those values really impacted the commercial property substantially. So a lot of the commercial people are following these appeals because, you know, through refinance process or mortgage process or whatever, they've got current appraisals and they're not close to what the appraisal or the assessment has been and therefore you have a lot of appeals. So I think the trend will be a continued reduction in that. So we're going to see a little bit more taper. I don't think it's going to be that much though. Um, well hopefully the, the nice thing about it is the assessments have been out now since February. And you know that, that means a lot of people have been through the process. now. Uh, we can certainly check with uh, Mr. Smith and see if he is seeing, uh, you know, a land rush. But I would assume that the number of appeals is gradually tapering. I think they've. Uh, I think the appeal time is over. I, as far as challenging the assessment, yes. there was a deadline for that. <coughs> now they're just they're, now they're hearing them going through the process. For tonight, what we'd like to do is really begin to talk about funding options. You know, this is the this is the part of the budget where uh, we just have to begin to roll up our sleeves and decide how do we approach what's ahead. Uh, my presentation tonight is going to be one of those that uh, is not pleasant to give. It's not going to be pleasant to receive, but it's one of those presentations that if we're going to focus and find a solution on the budget, we have to get down to this meeting tonight. And of course, we're really dealing just with the general fund. There'll be other issues that we'll be talking about the water and sewer fund, but really for tonight, let's focus on, on the general fund. In order to balance the budget, we have put in $5,600,000 out of your general fund. The department issues, depending on whether you agree or disagree with the ones, generally adds $150,000. Now that's, you know, Gail lets me use round <coughs> math, they're actual numbers that, that are the exact numbers, but generally $150,000 in department issues. I'm not suggesting that you have in any way discussed wage increases, but to give something so we have a target date to work with. If you were to pass on a wage increase for the general fund, you know, it has an impact. And the goal then for tonight's discussion is how do you begin to wrestle with the fact that you need for this budget, you know, almost $6.2 million. When you look at your funding sources, one of the funding sources is to go to whatever revenue neutral is, whether that's 57 cents or 57.4 or whatever it winds up being. Another is the unpleasant discussion of having a tax increase. Another is the unpleasant discussion of your sanitation fees. Another is a discussion of continued use of your fund balance. And then other sources. There aren't very many sources. But at the end of the day, you know, these are your revenue producing sources. Now, when you look at those revenue that's actually produced by source, I would remind you that, you know, unless the revenue neutral number continues to go up at 57 cents that's a 3.2 cent increase and that's going to generate roughly 1.1 million dollars and at the end of this you'll see a chart so you can write them down but for every cent that you increase the tax rate you get three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year ago, that number was more 365, 370, and that's what value, devaluation, revaluation has done for you. I'd also remind you that two years ago, you adopted a $5 sanitation fee for residential. And when you did that, that creates $675,000.
and fortunately the projection of what it would produce is almost identical to what it in fact has produced and continues to produce today. So we've had fiscal year 13 and fiscal year 14, you've generated for every $5 or for the $5 fee, 675000 I would also point out the relativity between that number and the one cent sales tax or the one cent property tax rather. Generally, $5 sanitation fee is equal to two cents of property tax. But remember, the property tax is placed upon all properties, commercial, industrial, residential, whereas the sanitation fee is charged to all residential customers or to any commercial activity that is picked up by the residential crews. Because as you know, some of our commercial customers use the 96 gallon container. And then of course, the other major funding is your general fund balance. With those things in mind, Let's begin to look. If your revenue goal is roughly 6.2 million, if you used general fund balance only to do it, you could balance the budget this year. The problem with that is your savings account will now be zero. The other problem is it's going to cost you at least $850,000 in sales tax loss for next year. You'll have major issues in 16, and of course you will have violated the policy that you have set on what your fund balance <coughs> minimum should be. So while that is an option, and I'm sure it's an option that, uh, that some folks in the, uh, pub in the world out there would say do, it's a short-term solution. And what you're going to face, we as a group will face next year, is a challenge that is even more catastrophic than the challenge that we're facing this year. Now, option two would be to use revenue neutral and fund balance. If you did that, you're going to get 1.1 million in revenue from the revenue neutral number. You will also then spend 5.1 instead of 6.2 in your fund balance. But again, what's gonna happen is the fund balance gets depleted uh, you continue to lose sales tax, maybe not quite as much as you would have, and you're going to continue to have major issues. That's a, a very, both of those, in my opinion, as the old saying goes, that dog don't hunt. They're, they're nice to talk about, it just doesn't solve your problem. Option three is, of course, just adding another layer, adding another option. Revenue neutral, fund balance, and tax. Now this is one that I assume that as soon as you saw that, that you would have a motion on the table that says, we need a new manager, let's close the <laughs> hearing and let's go on. If you were to balance this on revenue neutral, the recommended number of $1.5 million, which I'll come back to in a minute, out of your fund balance, you would need over 10 cents of tax in addition to the revenue neutral number in order to balance the budget. Now, why the one and a half million from fund balance? In going back and analyzing, we believe that you can stay consistent in the $1.5 million range every year of fund balance. But when you start going above that number, you're depleting the fund balance. In the last several years that we've had to use the fund balance, there is enough left over from the adopted budget to recirculate roughly 1.5 million every year. Once you get above 1.5 million of fund balance, we don't believe that that is a recirculable number. You're gonna to begin to draw down that account. Now, it leaves the fund balance pretty much intact. It does ensure sales tax revenue is safe because obviously at those numbers, you would not only not lose 850000 you would probably gain another 400000 So if you wanted to begin to capture back some of the money that has been lost from sales tax over the last three years, this is certainly one way to do it, because the higher your tax rate goes, the more of the portion of sales tax you would get. And then, of course, the FY16 and beyond is more secure. <coughs> As you look at these options, one of the things I would ask you to do is find a long-term solution so that we're not back at the table next year 
facing similar problems. We need to look at a solution that we can live with as a government to provide the services and the quality dependable activities which you provide to the citizens. We need to cure this so that we don't have to face this next year or the following year. If possible, we push it off for several years, if at all possible. Now, option four is taxes, fund balance, and fees. If you used revenue neutral and fund balance, and you added an additional five cents sanitation fee, five dollar sanitation fee, then the tax rate would actually come down to 8.3 cents. That's still a, a significant increase. But the point you're making is that by adding additional money to the sanitation fee, you are generating, for every $5, you bring the tax rate down two cents, generally two cents. And of course, the benefit there is it leaves the fund balance secure. It ensures the increase in the sales tax, offsets any negative there, and it gives you a very secure future for FY16 as well as FY15. Now, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's kind of like going to, uh, you know, to my favorite Dairy Queen, and you can decide what you want on the, you know, on the serving. At the end of the day, though, you have to pay the price in some fashion. And so combination five is the one that we really need to discuss today, and that is what are you comfortable doing so that we can begin as a staff to finalize the budget? Now, just to remind you, the revenue neutral, what it would produce, one cent of tax, $5 sanitation fee, general fund use. And also to remind you, the county's action was basically a nine cent increase from you know, 80, uh, 58 five to 67 five in that range. And again, there are things for us to begin to discuss. On your fund balance, how much you're using at figure of roughly a million and a half? What does that leave in fund balance in terms of the? It's going to leave you about four million. And, and remember, like what percentage? It's it's right at ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah, because remember the number eight to ten percent yeah. was between three point eight and four million dollars. Okay. So if you did that, you know you would be drawing down to roughly your policy statement. Now, at this point, if any of you all feel it necessary for us to take a five-minute break for you to <laughs> absorb the reality of our situation, we're not opposed to that. You can gain your thoughts. Otherwise, we're open to questions and discussions. It's a difficult position that, that we are in this year. But I would also remind the public that it's a position that, that has been placed upon you by many factors, some of which you control, but most of which you did not control. The, the count, one cent of property tax for the county generates $1.285 million. Okay, thank you, Ron. <clears throat> that it means anything, but there would have to be a reduction on appeals of a of roughly, <coughs> would you say the figure was? 1.3. million dollars reduction in appeals to affect one, one, one cent on a tax rate. A lot of money. A lot of money. Well, let, me, let me ask a question uh, so that we can begin to, to get the layers. Do any of y'all have any, uh, any problem with at least building the budget on the basis that you're agreeing that the rate will go up to at least revenue neutral? No, not I don't me. See, I don't see if we got any choice. What, what, was the, what was the number, the bottom line number we needed? Roughly $6.2 million. Yes, sir. 
Now that that had some assumptions in there, but roughly six point two million dollars. So they included two <clears> percent. <throat> adjustment of wages yes but obviously that decision I had to put something in the formula because the last thing we want to do is solve a problem and then suddenly add to it you well, you have the, the final I believe the set. county put in a percent right I actually don't know what the I county that's did right. on was put in two and a half percent that's what I read in the newspaper we'll, well confirm we know that's factual we'll put in. <laughs> We'll get both of those figures for you. Okay. Now, let me ask a second question. At least for planning purposes, are you comfortable with committing 1.5 million? Now, you can decide you want to go higher, but at least so we're building the layers. Are you comfortable with saying that you will spend at a minimum 1.5 million of your fund balance? Plus, at least it's that 10%. Yeah. I don't have a problem. And I'm, I'm personally comfortable, and I'll just throw it out there, I'm personally comfortable going some more because I believe that although we, we have an available amount of 5.2 or 5.6, whatever that was, because of the general statute of what we can't use, we actually have a little bit more. As I <coughs> see it in savings, we just can't get to it. Nevertheless, it's there and it's ours. Can you give me a number that you're comfortable um, with? I would be comfortable with two. And having said that, I think, as you indicated, and my experience over the, the eight years is that we do a good job of coming in below that number, typically. But I agree with you. If historically, you go way over that, you can see a decline in your checkbook, and, and we don't want that. But I think, two, when you're crunching numbers like this, I think it's there. Um, Anybody have an objection then putting in the Jello formula we're creating two million dollars for fund balance? I know Gail's going to object to that, but you know this time I'm not looking that into the table. I'm not sure I'm sold on that. And I'll throw one other thing out there while I'm at it. I'm not opposed to talking about fees. You know, again, uh, solid solid waste is, is is a user should be a user fee and not a property tax fee, uh, in my opinion, because people that get the service should pay for it, and not everybody that gets the service pays property tax. Even if we were to take double that figure on the sanitation fee, the way I figured it out, of course, my math's probably not even as good as yours, but it would be around, and used the one and a half, based on the one and a half million fund balance, uh, and a revenue neutral rate, a ten dollar boost in sanitation fee would leave us with it still having to make up six cents a little over six cents in property tax to to, mm -hmm. to make up the last two point two million dollars mm -hmm. yes sir. you know the when you look at the sanitation fee uh, the the commercial businesses pay a monthly fee residential pays a monthly fee now of five dollars because that's the policy y'all started two years ago there are definite impacts on everybody regardless of what we do there's an impact on somebody again for every five dollars that you give an increase on sanitation fees that reduces everybody's commercial and residential property tax by two cents generally it's not a pure number but it's close if you, one thought that I would ask you to consider is this. If you're going to make sanitation, residential service, self-funding, do you want to do that in one year or do you want to do it as a policy statement that over the next two or three years we're going to move from $5 to $10 to $15 so that it in fact pays for itself? Now that's a philosophical question and it's not one you necessarily have to get into tonight, but for every five dollars you have reduced the property tax by two cents. But I would like to at least have some discussion on user fee versus property tax because I think that's a discussion worth having. That's you know, a discussion. When you talk about, you know, trash pickup, again, if you if you shift that burden, which 
That's what's happening now. We're subsidizing from the general fund, which is property tax income. So everybody pays that. So moving towards a user fee, to me, is more applicable because whoever gets the service should pay for that service, and that's not what's happening now. Because you have some renters, you know, let's say renters, they don't pay for that service. The homeowner does, other than the $5 now. Would that be a correct statement? Well, I'm sure that through their rent, they are they are obviously. But nevertheless, paying, but nevertheless, it's still on a. But but it's distributed over more people. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. If you if you do if you. There's if you more people that would use that service that would pay that service than there is property tax. Yeah, the problem you have with property tax owners right now is they really can't raise their rates. They can't raise the rental rates. Market to, won't to, bear it. Market won't bear it. So. If we do it strictly through the property tax, then it then it's falls on the, the, the owner entirely. <clears throat> it's just a thought. I mean, because we are paying it from the general fund now. I mean, we're subsidizing it. Yeah. I mean, it captures more people paying in, you know, being responsible for, carry, for paying the bill. But on the other hand, going through the fee system, you're losing the sales tax money that you would have. That's true. Oh, that's, that's so it's kind of a catch-22. Point two. <clears throat> yeah, I've got another point that's uh, rather unpleasant, too, that Gail and I have been talking about via our water and sewer discussions, which is where this sanitation fee is generated yeah. on your water bill. Uh, the last analysis <coughs> we they provided approximately 6% of our water billings are sent out to people with zero usage. So how much trash do you think they're generating? So you've got people out there with homes for sale that are paying 57, 50, 63, 50 a <coughs> month and they are receiving nothing. I mean, they have availability. They have the availability. You know, they, if they go to somebody comes to show their house, but you've got. I mean, I look at that six percent as free money. I mean, we're not giving anything. I mean, we've got the availability. So if but you it's go, it's really not free. That truck still has to go by. That well, budget. it doesn't matter. They're not receiving anything. It's well, not. We still have to provide the service. We can't. We are not staff. taking any trash. You think? Here's the final point is if you bump what's I'm paying for I'm paying for nothing if you bump the price I'm more inclined to say never mind I mean if you had customers come in if six out of a hundred customers came into the Zara's Pizza and said here I'd like the the family special and they give you the money and they say oh never mind I'm gone I mean you you've given them nothing but they gave you the money if you raise the price, these people, I mean, maybe they're just complacent now. I mean, maybe they're just back in Arizona or wherever they live and they're trying so to they sell their house. they suspend their service is what you're right. saying? Right. Mm -hmm. They're paying for availability, but it's on. So if they get a bill and it's, say we put a couple of dollars on the rate, and we put $5 on sanitation, and it's gone from 63 to 72, he's going to say, honey, what is this again? And they said, well, well, we don't have to have that. We don't have to have it. So, again, there's a price curve, price-demand curve. You raise the price, and people don't have to have it. But from a business model, then, we would have to adjust personnel. Yeah, if we I mean, were if we, we were get, providing all words, the service, you can't, you can't we provide the service, the service if and when you want it. I mean, you have yeah. to have X amount of trash vehicles. You have to have X amount of people to right. make those routes happen. It, they and don't. You the customer doesn't care. Because, well, but we do because we have that expense. Yeah, we've got the overhead. You still have, we have the, the overhead, we have the overhead to for provide that, many that service. I understand what you're saying, and it makes I'm total you're sense. Risking. You're but risking a decreased revenue. Good example. How much revenue are you risking? Six percent of what? Of the total. Yeah, but we're subsidizing it anyway. Well, the I well, think the well, I, I would think, have to look. Pardon? I would have to look. It's one thousand. It's one thousand homes right. paying for 
water that use none, that use none. Nobody's living there. We're getting, we're, we're charging them trash. What, $48? Well, they're paying a minimum, right? Yeah, $48 yeah. a month for water and $5 for trash. And, and $5 storm for storm water. That's yeah. right. Storm so it's $5,000 on trash for 5,000 homes? 1,000 1, homes? But even if, they're, even if the house is sitting empty, six, I mean, they're still paying storm water. You know. Well, you know, we're not going to get it if they turn the water off. That's true. If they, turn, if they say, I don't need it, I obviously don't have to have it, there's nobody there, then you're, you're, you're pushing that curve. You're pushing that price. The demand's going to go down. Well, what you're say, saying, then, we're safer than putting it on a property tax because they can't, they can't, evade they can't that. walk away from that. Well, I'm just saying that there's less risk. On that. Yeah, that's what my point was, Jerry, you hit it on the head. We still have to provide that service. We can't elect to now go every three weeks to pick up your trash because, you know, in that area we only have 60% uh, customer base. You know what I mean? You have to, it's a business model that you have to execute every week. Right. You, you know. But, you know, the, the point of the discussion is, is extremely valid on all parts in that that we have to we have to walk a very fine line between how do we continue quality services and how do we have a guaranteed revenue source you know what mr thomas is saying is valid and that is if you raise the rate in anything too high it has an impact mr mr thomas uh, makes that point mr warden makes the point that if you raise the property tax too high you can't rent the property that is theoretically vacant so the dilemma that you always have is this dilemma of how do you build a pyramid? You know, do you do it strictly on property tax? Do you do it on a combination? And I would say to you that that's one of the advantages of saying that if you're going to have the sanitation fee become an enterprise fund that is self-funding, it would be nice to say we're going to set a rate today that makes it self-funding. The problem with that is the impact. And so what I would ask you to consider, not necessarily vote on tonight, is to agree that we are going to go back to policy that you started two years ago that said we're gradually going to work up these fees so that it is not tax dependent, it is user dependent. Now you can take a step this year towards user fee dependency or independency, <coughs> whichever way you want to walk. Next year, you may say, okay, the economy is recovering enough, we can take the next step. Or you may say next year, we need to hold off a year. The point being, though, you are in the financial position. We are in the financial position we are because of a number of things. One of them has been sanitation has not been a funded source. It has been out of your savings account. And for years, we were blessed that that worked. It doesn't work anymore, especially with revalue. My ears hear from a lot of people out there, and what I hear is that they want shared responsibility financially versus it coming out of their property taxes constantly to pay the, to foot the main bill for everything. You know, of course, a lot of what I hear is, you know, that people would like to see a sales tax that could take care of some of this stuff, which I think would be, and we all know, is probably a, a, a little bit fairer way of doing it, but, you know, the likelihood of getting legislative authority to do something like that. What you got to worry about, too, is, is, is if we, if the county gets a uh, sales tax option, other, we'll be one of the highest sales tax in the state, yep. uh, other than Mecklenburg. Right, and not getting we'll be any right benefit. right there with Mecklenburg. And, and won't be getting any benefit from it an increase that yeah. they would raise. Well, also remember in Budget Note 33, we talked about, uh, and let me just go back and read that for you. The question says, calculate the rate of city sales tax, which would be necessary to totally offset what the county did. Okay, that was the question. In addition, though, the Finance Department added some additional information, which I think is important. Let me read that to you. <coughs> in April of 2013, the county changed the distribution of sales tax. Prior to this change, the distribution the city received was roughly 22.7%. So out of all the sales tax that was collected, we got roughly 22.7% of it. Because of changes, that dropped to 18.6% in FY15. With the county's adopted budget, 
that would drop to 16.73. So you've lost almost 6% of the total revenue through the changes in the formula and the changes in the tax. Um, you know, while a sales tax would be a nice way because it makes it basically user fee, whoever uses your city pays for it. The, we have to, unless you got some really unique legislation, whatever you generate would then help everybody countywide, not just the city. And of course it depends on what you got through the state legislature as to how it was drafted. But I don't want anybody to think that under the current formulas, that if the city implemented a sales tax, all of that money would come to us. Because right now, you know, less than 20 cents on the dollar is coming back to the city. And I will remind everybody. Which I think it's a very convoluted yeah. way of doing things, in my opinion. It's archaic. You know, that's, that's the law of the, of the state, but to me, it's very archaic. It's, uh, you know, if you have a, if you have a generating uh, mechanism such as a city that's generating 90% of the sales tax and getting 20% 20% kick back. There's something wrong with that picture. Yeah. But <clears throat> as the old saying goes, it is what it is. We just want to point out to you that that, that percent continues to decline for the city. And I'd just like to add, too, I wasn't saying that I was against the user fee. Yeah. I just want to point well, out, point out that that the thing yeah. made a very good that, point. Is, that it's, yeah. it's a risk involved. Yeah. And, but one thing I do kind of bothers me is when you say the five dollar user fee is two cents sales tax. A two cents property tax. Two cents property yes. tax. That uh, I mean, we're not proposing raising the five dollars and lowering the two cents. I mean, it is an increase yeah, yeah. overall. Yeah. And it's a you know, I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I don't want anybody to think that. Well, heck, if I just raise my fees, I can lower my tax. That's no, not the, we're, that's not. But the only thing that five dollar increase was doing was keeping you from oh, having to raise the right the that's, that's penny tax even that's higher. Right. But, uh, that's right. Well, how about if we do this? Uh, if you don't mind, let's take a stretch for about uh, ten minutes and then come back and continue the dialogue. Would that work, Mayor? That sounds wonderful to me. Well, these figures will get better after that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. I'm all for that. Quick.